What's up, guys? We are live. So we have a fun debate for you. As you can see, this is also one of the few ones I've done during the day. So my video is going to look totally different. Uh, definitely not as good as at night, but we'll have to make do. Nah, I think it looks better like this. All right, there we go. Kind of look like I'm evil or something with this lighting. All right, so uh, let's do a quick introduction. We got Emily and Todd. I was on their channel before. They're good people. I think we're going to have an interesting discussion slash debate. Uh, do you guys want to give a quick introduction about yourself? Yeah, looking forward to our discussion, Alex. Thanks for having us on. Um, sure. I'm Emily King. I primarily started on TikTok not too long ago. I have 2.8 million followers, pretty much give dating and relationship advice. And then I'm a co-host with Todd with the Emily and Todd podcast, um, which is accessible on YouTube. So if you just at the Emily and Todd podcast, you can find us. We pretty much talk about dating advice a little touch of relationship advice too, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, but our focus is really on giving solutions to guys in the dating world right now. Cool. All right. So I want to I start off with this. So Emily, so, okay, is this a correct assessment? You kind of started off blue pill, but then you became like more black pillish. Is that correct? Or <laughs> I don't know. It, I would say that my opinions on the importance of looks has change just based on me knowing the details and the facts of like how people are meeting these days, which is primarily through dating apps. So I do think that like looks play a much larger role in dating apps. How have your, uh, how have your like views changed uh, since you started your channel to now besides the looks part playing more of a role? Uh, besides that, I mean, I would say that I have a greater understanding of some of men's struggles, for sure. Uh -huh. okay. and, you know, I didn't realize that like such a large group of young men are struggling, especially in their 20s. I kind of had the assumption that the 20s was like, you know, prime time, but that's really just it holds true for women quite a bit. Uh -huh. And younger women are typically looking for men that are a little bit more mature, not extremely you know, as far as age difference, but just a little bit older. So I think that guys that are like in their late twenties and early thirties, they don't struggle quite as much. Okay. What, uh, what percentage of the, uh, of the picture do you say when it comes to dating, do you think is looks What percentage do you think is uh game slash charisma slash personality slash whatever you want to call it? I think that depends on a lot. I think it depends on like where you're meeting. Let's start off with um, just day to day life. So like cold approach, yeah, kind of sure. like just running into somebody. Yeah. Or running to somebody or yeah. I, I, Alex, are you talking about making a cold approach? Are you talking about a warm environment? Can you be more specific? Um, sure. Let's start off with cold approach. So when you see a girl at a bar, you go up to her uh, in that type of situation. Okay. So this is the other variables. I think it depends on the girl. Um, so it depends okay. on what they're looking for. And this is something I think would be interesting to talk about is kind of the woman's perspective versus a man's perspective when you're first meeting somebody. And mm -hmm. I think that like a lot of guys from what I understand and tell me your opinion on this, but they kind of have like a yes, no bucket, I guess, you know, when they first see a girl, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in her. Let's find out more. Let's talk. Or it's just a complete no. Would right. you say yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I would have you at that though with, it depends on what you're looking for from a guy's perspective because if he's looking for a hookup his standards are going to be a lot lower than if he's looking for a relationship i think his look standards will be the same but his personality standards will be totally different mm, yeah, I don't his, know. his I look standard might be a little higher like he might be but they're not going to be drastically meaning he's i don't think a guy's going to sleep with a girl he finds repulsive and no no i'm not talking about repulsive i'm talking about somebody that like for example if you know she comes across as very you know trashy um you know he he would definitely have sex with her but at the same time you know even if she is uh, you know kind of at that base level attractiveness to him it's not going to um get her to the point of him saying okay i want to really learn about her so i can relate potentially get a relationship with her 
Oh, okay. I see, I see the I see the uh, schism. So yeah, so I would consider trashy to be uh, not really looks, but uh, more personality, right? Because a girl can control whether she's trashy or not. Like you can take a trashy yeah. girl, and like twenty four hours later, she can be not trashy based on her behavior, right? So I consider more of that like behavior rather than looks. I see how it can tie into both, but yeah, I'll consider that more behavioral based. It comes from like how you were raised, uh, your socioeconomic status, your style, your influences, and whatnot. Rather than yeah. just your genetics, but don't you think? No, we're not talking about. I'm not talking about genetics right now. I'm more talking about behavior. So, for example, if if a, if a woman, you know, has, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, like hair extensions, eyelash extensions, you know, a lot of tattoos, you know, like a BBL, that type of thing, that's where a lot of guys might look at her and say, "Yeah, I'll bring her home," but. She, I have no interest in a relationship with her. So I think, I think guys, I think guys say that, but I see like all the, I, I think most guys will still, uh, guys will typically date like anything they find attractive. So, all those BBL girls, they have like two or three boyfriends. <laughs> like, like guys will, I, look I think it depends on the guy. If it, yeah, it's more conservative right? type guy, I don't think he's gonna, who wants kind of more of a traditional woman, I don't think that that would be interesting to him. Um, but. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this. I did a we did a Tinder experiment recently. I haven't like really pu published the full results. We took a photo of my mom who's like 55 and used FaceApp to make her older. We made her like 65, 70, right? Like like an old grandma. And we <laughs> we set her age at like 36, right? Which is like obvious. That's like BS, right? Uh -huh. And then we had her. Uh, we had a bunch of guys in like their 20s to 30s match with her. She got a thousand match, thousand likes in 48 hours. Uh, like I guarantee you, some of those dudes were willing to wife up this like grandma. Uh, so I think that like guys like to LARP around that like, oh, you know, I'm really picky when it comes to like personality and relationships and small percentage of guys are actually legitimately in that category. But most guys will date that hot BBL girl, even if she looks really trashy. I think they, they may be in denial about it and they'll find ways to backwards rationalize it. Be like, well, you know, I feel like I really got to know her and she's actually not that trashy. Uh, so that's kind of my opinion on that. Okay. Well, I, I think probably because we live in, you know, much different areas, and that's could be part of a different experience. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because I'm thinking like the area that we live in, honestly, like if a guy was walking around with a woman like that, like that's actually a very unique look for where we live. Like it would stand out. It would draw eyes. Also, yeah, just... like dress provocatively, mm -hmm. I'd say. And let's admit that it's human, you know, that with a certain look, there's going to be assumptions made, you know, so hmm. he may not want to you know be seen with her simply because of those assumptions depending on the area that he lives in no i agree i bet there's like way less of bbl girls let's call them <laughs> like your area like i'm sure but i bet you yeah. if i if like we took like like a bunch of bbl girls like 20 of them and imported them to your area uh with and they were all interested in a relationship within a month they could all find boyfriends like there, there's definitely going to be a bunch of british guys and like not like like not like low life british guys like kind of like higher up uh, who work in finance here, you're definitely going to date these BBL girls. Uh, but they might be like, again, they, they're going to find ways to backwards rationalize. They're going to be like, well, you know, she wasn't what I was looking for, but, you know, the BBL culture is so fascinating. I don't know. That would be my speculation. Yeah, maybe. But I think the reality, if, it, if it's a high quality guy, meaning when I say high quality, I mean somebody with a decently high IQ, who's emotionally stable, who has who has a good job, comes from a good family, things like that. Again, he might smash, but I doubt that he's probably going to relationship her up unless he's really, uh, you know, kind of in, the, in that category where that's his only option. I think for a lot of guys, that is their only option. So, like, okay, what, what percentage of guys do you think fall into this, like, high-value guy category? Um, it's, Well, it depends. So I would say... You know, because that I, I kind of hate using those terms like high value, but essentially what when I'm referring to high value or low value, it's really about, you know, at the end of the day, and this is going to sound blue pill, but, you know, kind of what type of person are they are, you know, are, from a guy's perspective, are they an honorable man? Are they somebody that's a hard worker? Are they stable? You know, do they not, you know, use drugs and alcohol excessively? Yeah. Um, you know, those type of things. Are they able to hold down a job? You know, do they have their money right? That type of thing. And so that's kind of what I would consider. Unfortunately, the reason that I fall more kind of on the black pill camp is not because I value good looks or looks at all. 
it's the fact that the reality is, is that in our current dating meta, that's how you get in the door because of the fact that most people are meeting through some kind of either cold approach or online because warm environments just really don't exist anymore. Not like mm. they used to anyways. Yeah, I look at high value very simply. It's do you have abundance or scarcity? And in terms of guys, so I don't think your IQ or education really plays much of a role in that. And finance only plays somewhat of a role in it. Status does play a huge role and looks does play a bit of a role. But it really comes down to are you in a place where you're in abundance where you can pick from a variety of girls or are you in scarcity where you don't really have any options? And I would say that like something like 1% of men are actually in abundance. 1% of men would be like these high value guys who have a luxury of various girls they can choose from. 99% of men would not be in that category. They would be in scarcity and they're gonna like date like the, the first decent girl that comes along and like they will make all kinds of crazy exceptions that they will then backwards rationalize. Uh, but yeah, there is a small percentage of men who will be extremely picky because they have the luxury of being picky. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it has to do like the, like economics plays a role, right? Like, like we're all like civilized people, but like, what if we get all trans? What if there's like a zombie apocalypse or something like that, or the economy crashes? Uh, you know, within a few weeks, we're not going to be that civilized. We're going to be running around stealing from each other, like, uh, you know, like food and shit. Like, so all you have to do is like, I think economics plays a huge role, like abundance and scarcity. Now that we're all like, we have an abundance of like, um, you know, comfort, food, right? We act like very like sophisticated. It's like, oh, I will take the cream tartare scallops or whatever, right? But then go a few weeks without in, in scarcity and your whole behavior will change and your mindset will change. I think like sexual economics works like that to some extent. That'll be my speculation. Okay. Well, no, it's interesting, Alex, that you bring that up because, I mean, I wouldn't even say it's that high a percentage as far as if you're using those metrics. Because, and that's actually sounds very blackpilled because- the reality is the guys who are going to have abundance in this current dating meta are the guys who are the best looking. Yeah. So that, that's, that, that's what was separate from being black pillars. I wouldn't say that it, 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 it solely or primarily relies on looks. There's, there's good looking guys who are not in that category who are in scarcity because they're awkward with girls or they don't expose themselves much or they have social anxiety or any combination of other reasons. And there's guys who are not that good looking who are in that category, either because they got into the right social circles, uh, because they're really smooth and have a lot of charisma or because they have status. So I think that the black pill by solely focusing on looks or primarily focus on looks misses the bigger picture. Because if you look at like the guys, like if I walk around Miami, the guys that are walking around with the hottest girls, they're typically not giga chads. I mean, for sure, some of them are really good looking, but a lot of them, they look like your average guy, right? And it's like, so I look at that and then you sometimes you see some really, really good looking guys walking around with some like really unattractive girls. Uh, you see some famous guys walking around with unattractive girls. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just like, don't see that strong correlation between looks and the quality of your girlfriend, uh, just walking around the street. Well, but the, the reality is, is that they, we have no idea about how they actually met, you know? So it, a lot of it could be just beta boxing. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think people like, sure. I think to some extent, some of those guys are where they are, but I think a lot of relationships quasi work that way. Uh, it's just a matter to which extent where the guys like, like you can make the argument that anyone's beta boxing. If you're like living with, if you guys are living together and you pay the rent and she stays at home and like takes care of the house, you can make the argument that you're beta boxing or there's levels to it. Or maybe you give her an allowance or maybe you're straight up like paying her like a sugar baby, or maybe you're literally paying her a thousand dollars every time you guys hang out. So there's like levels of beta boxing, but to some extent in most relationships or in a lot of relationships unless the woman is making a good amount of money the guy is to some extent um subs uh, subsidizing her right unless unless the girl is making a good amount of money herself which like a lot of girls are not making as much money as like a guy who's like really high rep but there are some relationships where the girl makes a good amount of money well and that's changing massively because you know the stats are showing that between age 20 and 29 that women are surpassing men as far as income nowadays so and and that's you know kind of you know one of the the, the pillars the tenets of of the black bill ideology is that and i you know i don't know where you stand on this alex honestly i think you believe in, in hypergamy but you know that's something that um i, you know, I want to speak for emily but when well, we've spoken about that is that that is a thing depends on how you define hypergamy how would you define it um, that women will only date across or above as far as SMV. When you SMV, okay, you mean sexual market value. Does that yes. include things like status and charisma or just purely looks? 
No, no, it concludes everything. Um, generally, yes, but uh, there are quite a few exceptions. But generally, yes, yeah, I would agree that women will date across her up when if we if we go by everything, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's what that's what I was saying. So, for example, if for some you know miracle, some average guy you know gets you know gets together and has a relationship with um, a really uh, attractive woman there's got to be something else in place that's going on. Either he is like you and has, you know, 130 K subs on YouTube, or, you know, he's doing really well financially and is, is essentially, uh, you know, funding the relationship. That's what yeah, my people, argument would be. People, people overblow the subs. Have me having 130 K subs doesn't really do much for my dating life. It doesn't like, it's not okay. impressive, at least where I live. Yeah. Like no one gets Okay, Maybe that. not, but you know, for, destiny for example who's got 600 like to me and i i love the guy i think he's great but i think he's a little bit delusional about what the average guy goes through because of his and the other thing alex is that i bet if we look at your demographics it's almost mostly men on your channel Where for that destiny person. for example yeah. it's 50 50 yeah no his, his is also primarily men is it? Oh, yeah, I, 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 awesome. he, he talks about getting DMs from women all the time. He, he gets DMs from women, but his like audience is like ninety percent men. Yeah, okay. eighty ninety percent. Yeah, that's primarily dudes. Um, okay. yeah, right. sure, but I think there's also um, there's there's a good amount of like right place, right time exceptions. Like I know my last uh, two girlfriends ago, this chick that I was dating, um, she met she's a good looking girl, like really qual uh, hot Latina, and uh, she showed me a picture of like her ex husband who was like really, really unattractive. And like, I, uh, the story of how they met was basically she got a bad relationship. He was right place, right time, really good in bed apparently. And she just kind of, uh, you know, like fell in love with him slowly over time. So sometimes there's just like right place, right time, right social circle, and then uh, bonds start to form. And then like logic goes out the window. Yeah, I think that you make a really good point. And that kind of is a good lead in to really how I think women feel when they meet somebody and what they use and kind of the thought process that they go through when determining if this is a guy that they really are interested in or not. So mm -hmm. I think that women have three buckets. It's a yes, no. And then there's a very large maybe bucket. I agree with that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you have to, to some degree, you have to be attracted to him. So sure. I think that is sort of the first thing, especially on dating apps and even on cold approach. I would sure. say that like, if you don't pass that threshold, I don't think it like, you can't do anything really to convince her otherwise. And I think that if you do, like, if you really push her, that's dangerous territory because I think that she could see you as coming off as like really pushy, aggressive, even by using the word creep. I, f I think that's where that word comes in, you know, and, girls say that they met some creepy guy he probably wasn't doing anything different than a guy that was like attractive would do and just trying to start conversation with her but she wasn't attracted to him and so and women are really bad at just like shutting down a guy I think most women are just like really nice because there's a level of like uncertainty, especially when you're a young woman, like sure. what's this guy want kind of thing. Like, I don't want to make him mad. I don't want him. Sure. To I, upset. I it. So, you know, they just kind of go along with it. And then it's a whole like mix up because then that guy could even take her talking back to him as like, Oh, she's maybe into me, you know? And then like, he continues the conversation um, so that's like probably getting into another conversation of knowing somebody's body language, you know, and really oh, I actually agree with that. everything you said. Um, the one thing I would, the one caveat I would give, this is where I disagree with the black bill is I think that, I think that most guys will fall into the maybe bucket for some girls. You have to be particularly ugly not to, or particularly unattractive, not to be in the maybe bucket for every girl, right? Like if, if you're okay. So the, this is how I see it. If you're like really good looking guy, you will be either in the yes or maybe bucket for the vast majority of girls. If you're yeah. an average guy and most guys are average, right? Like, like it's, it's mm -hmm. guys who are like twos and threes are the exception to the rule. Like most people that like are average, right? That's what the word average means is like you're the average person, right? Four, five, six, right? That's average, right? And that's like where the vast majority of men fall into. You're going to be in the maybe bucket for 
you're going to be in the no bucket for some for some girls. You're going to be in the yes bucket for very few girls. But you're going to also be in the maybe bucket for a good amount of girls, right? Uh, she just might be attracted to some quality about you. It's like, oh, this guy's not particularly good looking, but I like his hair or I like his eyes or I like his style or something like that. Um, so, yeah, that's why I think versus the black that would make the argument that like, you know, it's only like the chads who are falling in the yes bucket and everyone else is just like the chad lights maybe get the maybe bucket, but the average guys in the no bucket for most girls. That's where I think I would disagree with the black pill. So you think well, like one guy could be potentially in all three different buckets, just in different girls buckets? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think that for I mean, I think it's pretty. Yeah, I think so. I mean, sure. Like if you're a really, really good looking guy, you're primarily going to be in the yes or maybe bucket. But there are still some girls who will put you in the no bucket. Like maybe you, yeah. she thinks you're too much of a pretty boy and she had a bad experience with someone who was really good looking and she thinks you're going to cheat on her. So you'll still theoretically be in the no bucket. If you're really, really repulsive, like sure, yeah, you're going to be in the no bucket for the vast majority of girls. But there will still be some girls who you a small percentage of them sure uh you're gonna have to run higher volume who you'll be in the maybe bucket for and she'll be like okay this guy's not really attractive but and then the butt could be whatever it is that you have to offer yeah so yeah i, I honestly i would disagree with one point you made is that you know saying that most guys are average it there obviously is going to be an average but i think the reality is is that most guys are not attract most women are not attracted to most guys now because if you look at the obesity rates in the united states it's okay it's okay for a woman to be overweight but for a guy to be overweight that just kills his chances most of the time women are not attracted to overweight guys and there's a lot of overweight guys and especially in the younger generation because as a psychotherapist, I've worked with hundreds of guys who kind of fit in this category. A lot of them have no idea about looks maxing at all. A lot of them don't even know how to shower on a regular basis. So well, I, think I, would, that there's, I think there's a lot of guys out there that um, just, you know, the things that you would talk about and we would talk about are just completely clueless to. Um, we talked to a guy yesterday when we were prepping for this who hadn't even heard of the manosphere. <laughs> So I, I, th I think that, um, you know, the reality is, is that guys really need to level up. And I think we're, we're both, you know, kind of uh, preaching that same message. I would fundamentally disagree with a big part of that. The, um, the idea that like um, a, a, an overweight guy is going to have a, sorry, that is more acceptable for a guy or sorry, there's less acceptable for a guy to be overweight. An overweight girl will do way better than the average guy. No, and, I agree with that. That's what I was right. saying. Right. So it's like, so for the, um, so overweight girl can like totally crush online dating, right? Still versus, yeah. right. Okay. So that's the yeah, first my, point. My, yeah. My point is saying that it's acceptable for women to be overweight, that guys will go down that route, but women will go down that route with the overweight guys. So overweight okay, guys okay. don't have a chance yeah. as much as an overweight woman. Yes. Uh, unless, unless they're like rich or have high status. Yeah. I would agree with that generally speaking, but okay. But if you say that most guys aren't average, then what category do they fall into? Well, I mean, there's always going to be an average, right? It's just, I think what the average is, is that, you know, if, and if you, you know, looked at some of the studies about how women view men, the guys aren't cutting it. So whatever the average is, it's below what a lot of women would find attractive. At least Wait, we're talking about, but, Okay. We're talking about looks right now, or overall, overall uh, picture. Um, mostly, mostly, well, you know, like for that okay Cupid study that said, you know, um, women believe that 80% of men are below average. So, you know, I, I would assume that would be mostly based on looks, but, you know, the reality is, is that um, it could be, you know, total SMV as well. But the reality is too, is that the average guy probably makes like 40 grand a year. Yeah. yeah I don't think you're he compensating. Um, well, you can compensate in many different ways. You can compensate through uh, really good charisma. You can compensate through, for example, uh, having social connections. I mean, there's many, many different ways through being really funny. Uh, there's many different forms of like ways you can kind of uh, equalize the balance. But I would say like the by default, the the average guy is average, right? Like that, like the average guy is like a five, five point five in terms of looks uh, in terms of personality. 
qualities. He might be below average. Like the average guy is probably more socially awkward than the girls would like. Uh, he's probably shyer, more timid than most girls would like. Sure, I can accept all that. But in terms of looks, like the average guy isn't a three. Like the average guy is like a five. And then guys who are like outliers, like really ugly, really attractive, are by default outliers, right? That's just like basic statistics. I think that women's opinion on like what they think is an average looking guy can definitely be skewed. You know, it's almost like the average income earner, you know, like that's really skewed. We yeah, know that. Or, or we know. the thing that we've talked about all the time until we actually got on the same page yeah. was what a dad bod is. And so oh, we've talked a lot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so what a dad bod is from a guy's perspective is going to be much different than when a, what a typical woman would think a dad bod is. Right. And that's very subjective, whereas like I feel like looks, you know, if you're rating it on that scale and obviously income, that's a little bit more objective, you know. But as far as the dad bod thing, it depends on your view of what a dad bod is and what your definition is. And I think that a woman's definition of a dad bod is very different from a man's definition of a dad bod. I've seen okay, it so over I, and over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we've gotten to the heart of the disagreement, not the disagreement, but the confusion. Um, yeah. Okay, so... I agree with you that women's perception of what is average could be skewed, but yeah, that doesn't yeah. change the reality that the average guy is average if we're being objective. But yes, I could agree with you that a woman's perception. So the average guy is a five, but a girl might think that the average guy looks like a 6.5 or something like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Through social media. Is. Okay. 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 Yeah. So yeah. then we actually agree. We're just, we're just mm -hmm. talking about slightly different things. Yeah. I agree with you that the, the girl's perception is probably going to be skewed due to um, just all the media that she consumes. Right. Cause it's like, typically mm -hmm. it's not the average guy that's pushed to the top of the list on Instagram, nor the average girl. It's typically like the better looking people get pushed higher. So then your perception of what is average, you know, goes out the window. I mean, I remember like when I was in like high school, like, you know, like what I thought was like the average girl and the hot girl, is like nowadays I would look at just living in Miami and like in 2023, I would think is like average at best, if not below average, like the hot girl in my high school, I would say is like, to me, looks average now. But back in those days, I would have thought that was like the hottest chick ever. And like, oh my God, if I could just get close to her, but now I'd be like, oh, she's okay, I guess. I don't know. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, so well, yeah, you make I a valid point and that's so pervasive. It's not only on social media, it's on, it's in, you know, movies, it's in TV shows, yeah. it's, it's artists, you know, so, Though some of those are exceptions, of course, but you know, typically any leading man in a in a show or a movie is 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 going to be one. is going to be a Chad, yeah. you know, and so, um, and especially if you're younger, the the, the TikTok guys that are going to come across your screen are going to be you know all those Chads as well. So you have the combination of that, and then the other combination, or sorry, the other factor that is involved is that that there's a lot of entitled women out there nowadays because of the fact that they get so many matches and also their friends prop them up all the time even if they're below average and so how many women have you've heard say i'm a 10 and they're really a three sure i, I agree with that yeah guys guys uh, ability to rate themselves is way more accurate than women's sure like most girls significantly overrate themselves to like an insanely comical degree versus more guys mo most guys actually underrate themselves or like equal Right. Like I think guys are way more modest when it comes to their self-perception. Yes, I do think that has to do with like the kind of uh, experience you get from the outside world. Right. If you're like a below average girl, objectively, but like you're getting treated like a 10, you're going to probably think you're a 10. Right. And then you're going to delude yourself. So, yeah, I do agree. All of that is an issue. And we probably do agree on the solution. That's to, to level up as a man. But then it's kind of like. It, there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it from a macro or micro perspective. From a macro perspective, it's like if more guys keep leveling up, then the standard just keeps going higher and higher and higher. And then it just becomes more of a constant rat race, right? From a macro perspective, that like is kind of like not really the best solution. But from a micro perspective, that's really the only solution because you can't control the macro. You can't control society standards and what the average woman thinks. All you can do is control what you do. So your only choice is to level up. So it's kind of like a uh, little bit of a catch-22. You know what yeah, I mean? we're in the same place as that. Yeah. I think the other thing that really needs to happen, but probably won't in the near future, is women to be more uh, realistic as far as where they are. Well, but that won't happen, I, right? Because that's yeah. macro. That's a macro solution. Yeah, there's no I way understand. to. Yeah. But it's yeah, and exactly. But it's something too that, and you know, this is kind of where thirstiness and simps comes in. Is you know, I think the message has to be sent that you know, guys have to you know, stop doing this, especially, you know, to, to women 
or I would say to any woman, you know, to put her on a pedestal. That's just weak behavior in my, my, my perspective. But, you know, that's another problem that's probably not going to go away anytime soon, no matter yeah, how much I mean, we like, all preach it. The only way to, like, really, like, even have a role in that would be for the government to come in and, like, make anti-simping laws where, like, if you, if you get caught simping, you go to jail for 10 years. Like, yeah, if, you, if, if, the, if yeah. the government does that, then, yeah, we could probably make a difference. But I know. no it's, government is going to do that. Like, anti-simping yeah. laws, like, 10 years in jail for the first simping offense, lifetime for the second, death penalty for the third. It's like, yeah. what are you on death row for? It's, oh, you know, like, I just to this chick's DMs and I triple text yeah. her. It's only going to increase, too, because I think that that has increased because of social media. Because of the artificial inflation, because as more guys <laughs> sit and the standard keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. It's only going to get worse. And so I mean, you... we were just talking about how there's women even simping for guys on TikTok. Yeah. I don't it's know a, if you know. Yeah. 100%. Matt Reif, the comedian on no. tiktok oh he's been blowing up and he's he's very attractive and he's young and very funny and if you go into any of his comment section it's just women simping over him it's hilarious oh. yeah <laughs> so maybe they just need to equalize more women need to simp <laughs> i think i think well, the reason women won't simp is because there's all they're only really attracted to the matt rice of the world well right it'll only be a select few guys well no but i think someone like leonardo dicaprio could destroy this matt rife character that i know nothing about like not current leonardo dicaprio with, with his because i think that above average looking guy was stat with massive like oh, highest level massive. of status yeah well, well yeah well, well, a really good looking guy with minimal status yeah sure but there's Leonardo, there's only one Leonardo DiCaprio in the world, and so we're talking about 0.0001% of guys who can who are average looking but have that kind of status. Sure, yeah. Well, Leonardo DiCaprio, I would say, is above average looking, right? Probably. Uh, he's at like, this point, I would say he's a normie for sure. Really? Okay, really? yeah. When he was young, he was definitely a Chad, but he's almost 50 years old, and I mean, he looks pretty good for his age. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he do, he he does compared to most fifty year olds. But if That's he didn't, true. but if he didn't have that status, if he was just a normal fifty year old, sure, yeah, it would be completely different. Yeah. different. Well, I think it's status is different. Like, status is like a hell of a drug. Like I think that, yeah, like I would always put my money on a like an older guy with insane status over like a young, really good looking guy, uh, just an ability to uh, to compete in the dating marketplace. Uh, but also, if you think about it, like most like leading actors, I don't think they're like giga chats. I think they're more like decent looking, good looking guys for like sixes and sevens. Because I think for like moving big movie production companies to cast like as the main role as a giga chat, which does happen sometimes, but to constantly do it is like could discourage the average person from watching it. So I think they would want to cast someone who's like more attainable, where it's like, oh, I could potentially if I do everything right. Well, like give me like counter examples. I'll, di I'll give it. I'll disagree. Because look at as much as I can't stand these films, but look at the whole Marvel universe. Yeah. I mean, look at Captain America. Like, they're all, you know... Well, those yeah. are superhero movies. They have to cast... Or that's a little bit of an yeah. exception. Yeah, but the reality is is that that's what people are going to watch. I mean, the, one, one of those... The, uh, uh, one of those uh, Marvel Cinematic uh, Avengers movies, I think, was, like, one of the highest-grossing movies of all time. Like, that's what people are watching. Even like the new Batman movie that came out, yeah, you know, it's Robert Pattinson. He's definitely, you know, in that one percent Chad category. Mm -hmm. You know, I would I would say that you know for most TV and film roles, and think about what they cast as the villain. The villain is always some guy, especially like in James Bond films, that has a scar or yeah, you know, is, or skinny, is, scrawny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Versus Bond is always you know the the, the Giga Chad. Yeah. You even said yourself, Alex, when we were talking before that, like he's the ideal, right? He's the ideal. Like, I think, composition. But I think I, I think we can't like looking at uh, superhero movies. Of course, for superhero movies, they're going to cast the best looking guy because that's like the the best chance that he's going to be like a like a superhero, right? But if we look at like uh, like the most popular like actually TV shows, right? They're typically not like a giga chat. They're just a good looking guy, like Twenty Four, uh, Seinfeld. Um, Friends, Frasier, um, Game of Thrones, right? Like none of these contain giga chats. They contain like average to above average looking guys, right? Like the most popular TV shows uh, of all times. Like I'm looking at this, the 100 most watched TV shows of all time. I got the list on IMDb. The first one is Game of Thrones, right? That one, you can maybe make the argument that Jamie Lannister is like a chad, but that's about it. Stranger Things, I don't know. The Walking Dead, I don't believe The Walking Dead contains any like giga chats. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, like most of the Grey's Anatomy, again, like above average looking guys. Uh, all like, those guys are all Chads. Yeah, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Right? You yeah. think those are all Giga Chads on the Grey's Anatomy? I, I, yeah, I, the I, main I, one, the, like, um, what's his name? Uh, oh, Patrick Dempsey. I think yeah, his name is. Patrick Dempsey. He's definitely a Chad. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying yeah, we're, we're, we're debating about semantics, though, as far as, you know, like how much does this really impact, uh, you know, women's standards? I would I would say that it's especially for younger women, it's really going to be more social media like the TikTok. And I think what's going to be coming through their FYPs is going to be mostly kind of it's going to be really, you know, attractive guys or it's going to be guys who are, you know, really funny or at the, you know, or unattractive guys. Yeah, because I think movies and like TikTok, very different, right? Movies, you need to have a certain sure, level of talent. Yeah, I agree with that. And so it's hard to find somebody that has a very specific look. You know, if you're sure. trying to find the most attractive guy, he may not be as talented as the guy that's a little bit less attractive. But on TikTok, like it's so easy to make a short sure, okay. little clip where you're not even talking and you're just staring into the camera as a guy. And, you know, if you're really attractive, that can really take off. And I think that we've been seeing that over the last five, 10 years. And so more women are seeing these types of men, just like in reverse, you know, just like it's always been with models, female models that men are looking at. And then, you know, it just skews their opinion of what normal is. Yeah, well, I would say I, I do. Agree, I do agree with that. Yeah, I think there's a massive. Dip. Yeah, I do agree that there's a difference between Hollywood and TikTok. And TikTok. Yeah. I mean, this goes back to my what I always say, which is I think TikTok is like a fucking poison on society. And hmm, yeah, I love to argue that. <laughs> I, mean, I think like it's pretty clear that like TikTok is controlled by the CCP, and that, that like their whole point is just to make Westerners as dumb as possible. Yeah, uh, and yeah we're not going to disagree with that yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know, even as a TikToker here, yeah, <laughs> I will not disagree. Like, it really does depend on the content that you consume and how the algorithm kind of figures you out and what kind of content that you like. But I think for like Gen Z, they are being fed like junk. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I heard that in like uh, in China, like TikTok algorithm is like totally different. Instead of promoting like it, videos, it shows like like educational content. I've had like yeah. a few people who I, who I know who are Chinese confirm that it's like mm -hmm. totally different algorithm. Like, so yeah, it kind of makes sense that yeah. like yeah yeah. I, I I personally don't consume anything on TikTok. I just uh, post content on there, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't like that app too much. From like, yeah, the, the, the you know the thing about the way it, the, it works so well is that it clocks it by watch time. And so if you're a guy and, you know, a, a total 10 comes on the screen and is, you know, jumping up and down and it's, it's one of those things where it's difficult not to look. And then yeah. all of a sudden that ends up happening because like, for example, for our TikTok page, you know, Emily and I are, bo are both on that, mm -hmm. but just for the hell of it, I decided to go on the FYP of that page. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that got shown because probably they saw a guy's name in it right was you know one of these women so they lead with that type of thing and they that's do. that's how they try to get you hooked mm -hmm. so i think that um you can end up watching it but not liking it but they pay more attention to your watch time so you're we, going to get you know inundated with a ton of videos just like that one if you've watched the whole thing would you agree that like if you guys both like but you guys both just started your own separate TikToks from scratch that Emily would have a much much um, easier road to getting to a million subs than you talk just because she's female? Um, it's not because she's female. First is that she's young and attractive, and she's super talented. So that she would, you know, but I'm, I'm just assuming, would me there. I'm just assuming for <laughs> argument's sake, you guys have the same level of talent, same level of charisma, same level of everything, right? Uh, uh -huh. And like, sure, Emily's pretty, yeah. right? But like, there is also like just the fact that she's a female, and that by default, more, more people will watch her just because they, you know, she's a female, and that will push her wa average watch time. And so, like, yeah, I, I do think those the uh, I don't know because Emily is very modest on camera, and so like she doesn't lead with her sexuality at all. You don't. Have and so if you say if you're saying I had the exact amount of talent that Emily did, I think that. It, it might not be that much of a difference. Yeah, because in my case, like my looks, I'm not leading with that necessarily or relying on that as much. 
Well, yeah, you, you can be very modest, right? Like for example, like Courtney Ryan is very also very modest, right? Like she's she doesn't not modest. Courtney? She show she she shows her cleavage every damn video. I mean, and it's and the camera is set like right below where her cleavage is. She's leading with her looks for sure. I mean, Come to on. some extent, but she's not like <laughs> just like she's not. She's like always wearing like pretty like conservative clothing, from what I've seen. I don't know. How do you feel about that, Ellen? You've yeah. Seen her. So my opinion is is that she is showing a lot of cleavage. But then, how do you do it as a girl? Where you do, like, what do you have to wear? Like a straight jacket or something? So no one can. <laughs> what would be the alternative to that? Like, she I just wears what she's wearing now, or yeah, you know, that's kind of what you would wear. That's kind of what Courtney wears too. Like, what exactly what Emily's wearing? No, <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no way. I don't know. Like, <laughs> look at her so videos. Every I don't know. This can be very subjective too, right? Because like for me individually, I just wear what I normally wear out. Like, if I would wear in my videos what I wear to the grocery store. So for me, like if I was wearing a low cut, you know, in one of my videos, that's actually very unnatural for me. I wouldn't be wearing that out. So that's where it's like, if I were to do that, I am definitely individually leading with my sexuality, right? Because there's that divide of what I normally wear versus what I'm purposely wearing to get attention. A big so, part of that could be climate, though, because you are from like much more north. You're from you're from a place where it's almost always cold, right? So no, it gets into the 80s here in the yeah, summer. It, yeah, no, it's, it it's gets half warm. and half. Yeah, and I'm not saying that like like I show my stomach in many of my videos, like during the summertime in short shorts. Like it's not like I'm in a straight jacket, but um, that again, that's all stuff that I would normally wear out. So somebody might look at my videos that is really modest and they might say the same thing about me. They might say that, oh, she's leading with her sexuality, but I'm not really because I'm just comfortable in that. So if Courtney is like comfortable in yeah. that, you know, she wears that in everyday life, then I think the argument could be made that that is just her, you know. And I mean, I'm, I'm speculating because I don't know her that well, but I would make, I would probably, if I had to bet my money, I would definitely bet that that's like what she wears. Just from like the communication, what I know about her is that like that's what she wears in like her day to day life. Uh, like there are definitely some yeah. like female content creators who do a lot of thirst traps, right? Uh, like they never mention that they have a boyfriend. They kind of lead guys on to think that like, oh, you know, you might have a chance with me. Like I, I, I definitely know a lot of female content creators do that. But I feel like Courtney's pretty upfront about the fact that she has a boyfriend. That she's not going to hook up with any of these guys, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, know. but how, how do you feel about Kezia Noble, for example? Um, she she leads with her looks for sure. I mean, yeah. you know, she she understands that her you know breasts will get her way more views, right? I mean, um, I think she's a good content creator. I like her as a person. No, no, yeah, I was just I wasn't asking about her content creation. I was just asking about she she's definitely she less modest. Her. She's less modest than Courtney. I will say say that for sure. Okay. Yeah. And so I think there's definitely different levels to this. There's levels so I would say it. she's the highest. Courtney would be in the middle and then Emily would be the bottom as far as leading with sexuality. For well, sure. I, th I think in order to really get to the bottom of this, we got to put like an ugly mask and a fat suit on Emily and then we can really make sure she's not leading with her sexuality. So let's yeah. get like a 500 pound fat suit on you and we can really be sure about this. If she yeah. was making let's content for, uh, for women, then it probably wouldn't be an issue. Um, yeah, I'd probably get more um, women subscribers. <laughs> yeah, but if if it's something for if, if it's for men, yeah. I don't know, you know. So because the reality is, is that you know that woman I keep forgetting her name, Drew, whatever. Um, Drew, yeah, my favorite content creator. Yeah, yeah the, you know she's overweight and you know okay. just she's the definition of trashy to me. Yeah, and she's got huge numbers of female. You know, I, if there's any guys that are uh you know following her i'd be surprised yeah that's that's, that's a fair point sure i i kind of get that what what, what are your analytics emily what percentage of the channel is male to women i would speculate that you're like 90 percent men for your channel you hit it dead on 90? it varies okay. a little bit like i've gone through periods where it's 85 percent men but i just checked yesterday and it's at 90 right now for mm -hmm. men and then 10 percent women yeah that's kind so, of so like i would not I would be in denial to say that like there's probably some men that have followed me simply because of how I look, you know, mm -hmm. and especially with how TikTok works, you can just easily follow after watching one video and without even seeing somebody's page, you know, mm -hmm. and to see what they're all about. You can just decide, ooh, like she's attractive. I'm going to follow her. That definitely happens. So I would be crazy to say that there's none of my followers that have followed me just for that. 
Well, I also don't think it has to be like black and white where it's either like you're yeah. following someone for looks or talent. I think it can be, it's typically more like, uh, like kind of in the center where it's like maybe like uh, so, someone yeah. watches your video a few seconds longer because they're hoping that maybe you will like show something, but then you don't, but then they wind up like staying on the video for a few seconds longer anyway. And then like that pushes you up in the algorithm and that creates like a chain reaction. And then like maybe some of them like like your content, some of them don't. So I feel like it's it's typically not like black and white where it's just like, I'm just following this girl because she's hot or yeah. I'm just, following this. I think sometimes it's like a, a little bit of a combination of things. I agree. Yeah. I think the majority of followers, it's because of both, you yes. know, potentially. Yes, it's absolutely. But I think that there's a lot of women on there that are only being followed because of the way that they look. Yes. Sure. And the same thing with guys. Yeah. Because you have talent as well and you and you put really good content out there. And, and so and you do a lot of validation for men about their struggles. And you know, that's you're like probably the number one person in that space for females to males Me? on all of TikTok. Oh, I don't know about that. You think I'm the number one person? Really? No, Emily's the number one person. Oh, on TikTok oh, oh, oh. as far as um, having a, a male audience, as far as being a female creator. Oh, okay. That, yeah, I don't that, know. I don't know too much I about that. Like within, within the content that I do. I yeah, within say. the content. Yeah. 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 Because okay. there was really no one even before me getting started, other than like maybe one. She has, I forget her name, but she has like a ton of tattoos. But her style is very different and she's more like harsh and she bashes women. So she kind of does like the opposite of what you see Drew do where she bashes men because mm. of, you know, what a man has said about a woman. Yeah, you've probably seen her, Elk. She's She's got neck tattoos. That's yeah, the one you're referring to, yeah, right, too? I forget her name. And um, mm -hmm. she is, uh, I don't know, maybe it's, if this is a live chat, someone could know what her name is. But yeah, yeah she, she does, she kind of doubles down because she advocate for men but she also trashed women simultaneously right. where i mean you do a little bit of trashing women I, of their bad behavior i push but, on their bad behavior yeah. never attack their looks like no. I, I just think that there's areas that you don't go into and i'm going to attack what they're doing to somebody else because i don't believe in that is right you know like that's a poor argument mm. for your behavior so i will definitely dig in like with some of my stitches in that aspect Oh, but someone said it's uh, Ro Roma Army. Is Roma that Army, that's yeah, what it is. Okay. Yeah, she used to get tagged in my stuff quite often because, like, when I first got started, I think her audience came over to me and started following me, so they were, like, tagging her. So that's when I found out about her. But other than that, like, there was no one really before me that did But there's been a lot content. of people after you. But a lot of people after, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, what do you like think the about the concept of, like, a pick-me girl? You, you know what that is? Like, a girl Oh, my likes... gosh. Do I know what that is? I get that thrown at me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, like I've heard people make that argument about Pearl, that, like, the yeah. reason she rose – I'm not making this argument, by the way. I just, I've heard this argument. And my girlfriend mm -hmm. actually makes this argument, is that the reason she rose to such prominence is because she was telling guys exactly what they want to hear, uh, right? And that, like, you know, it's like, yeah, finally, a woman who <laughs> takes her side. And I guess yeah. Drew's like the opposite of that. She's like a pick me guy or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Whatever the fuck you want to call the opposite of a pick me girl. Uh, right. Actually, I don't think there's a term for that, but yeah, you, you get the point. Yeah, so um, how much, how much do you think that can play a role in like boosting you up in the algorithm? Just kind of telling people what they want to hear. I feel yeah, like I, that's a huge role in my opinion. It can, I can see that. Um, but I think that you still need to come off as genuine. I think that people in the audience are really, good at being able to depict when you are not because i've had people so they're almost more like copycats after me where they've seen some of my content and they're a woman that are like fairly attractive and they will almost verbatim without using my sound they will say like the same things as me and mm -hmm. you can just like me personally i can tell that they're copying me and they're not being genuine but then I'll go to the comments and a lot of people are calling her out because they can read with her body language that she's not being genuine. And plus, some of them have already heard what I've said. And so they know that she's just copying. So I think that that can definitely be a situation where that woman is, you know, just being, quote unquote, a pick me. They're just trying to say the things that they know that men want to hear just so that they get the follow or the yeah, likes. Yeah, they're just pandering. They're pandering, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I definitely think that that happens. But when you have, like, an original idea, you know, that, like, a guy 
say he comes across my video and it's a very different opinion. And I don't think that I pander to men. I think that I try to show both sides of a situation many times. And mm -hmm. but you're also mostly in the so this is I think what's we should talk about real yeah. quickly is that you're more in the dating space on TikTok where mm -hmm. our, or relationship, I should say. Yeah. And yes. we're on our podcast, we're more talking about dating. That is very true. So yes. It's, it's, what's the what's the difference? Talking well, about people in relationships. Yeah. Or, so like the issues that people come across in relationships with communication errors. Oh, I see, or like okay. what a man desires versus what a woman desires in what oh, you know, what they both need versus, you know, when we talk on the podcast, it is like advice to men on what for, they can do, you know, based on X, Y, Z, what women want. In okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Different terminology. Different. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I would say dating, it would, would it be pre-relationship or mm -hmm. if, you know, the guy is into the hookup culture, you know, that type of thing, which I know you, you know, focus a lot of your attention on as well. But um, dating would be, you know, to relationships and, you know, kind of so on her TikTok, she's going to be mostly talking about the dynamics between men and women yeah. who are kind of already either um, have gone out um, at least on one or two dates, probably, or are kind right. of in relationships, not kind right. of the getting in the door stage. That's kind of what we're right. trying to do here. Okay. And yeah. the other thing that like I talk about, because I'm just thinking since you mentioned Pearl and this has come about because she actually had some viral TikToks just uh -huh. go viral recently. And she's talking about cheating and like why men cheat on their woman. Mm -hmm. And that's a topic that I've covered quite often on my TikTok. And I think that Pearl might be pandering because I don't think she has enough experience personally to really speak to that issue or have like has worked with people that have been in relationships in which that happens because i think that she makes a really good points when it comes to dating but i just don't think based on like the way that she talks about that men cheat basically because of his woman not doing xyz like i i think that's telling that she doesn't she's not really fully aware of what goes into a relationship and what causes that type of situation. Yeah, I don't even know if Pearl's been in a relationship. And that's what everyone's all. attacking her for, right? I feel like red like pillars in down. general view relationships as like too transactional. So do black pillars to some yeah. extent, but definitely red pillars. Like they view it as like a they take all the emotion and and the humanity out of a relationship. They just look at it as like a logical transaction, which it's seldom yeah. ever. Right? Relationships yes, are right. logical transactions. You make a really good point because I think that is what she's doing. She has also bashed women for not leaving immediately after her man cheats, like instantly. And if you've ever been in a relationship, like whatever comes up and you're talking about ending the relationship, it's very difficult to end it immediately, you know, and I would argue against that not being healthy anyways. Yeah, it's like it, I come from like a pickup background. So it's like in the pickup, one of the first things you you learn is attraction is emotional, not logical, which is like always funny to me to watch like fresh and fit and like like red pillars who view in a very logical way. It seems like their strategy is literally to like show up on a date and give the girl five logical reasons why they should have sex with them. And it's like like attraction doesn't work that way, right? You can be you can be like make a lot of money, but if you go up to a girl and you're like, hey, I make a lot of money, that's actually gonna work against you, or mm -hmm. at the very best be neutral. So yeah, it's like kind of funny to watch that. But yeah, like I do think that the red pillars really take the human element out of it and you, like you can't ignore that even if you want to because again like relationships are typically emotional like a lot of relationships aren't these perfect transactions of value where like you're doing 50 and i'm doing 50 like a lot of times there's an emotional element uh there's a dependency element there's like you know like love makes you do things that you might not do logically there's all these other factors that go into the photo that uh in the picture that like red pillars just completely forget about i'm curious well, the other what thing that red pillars don't really focus on at all is relationships in general and so that's one of the, the issues i have with the, the red pill community is the fact that they're really just focused more on getting laid or you know short-term hookups relationships that type of thing versus you know having trying tr trying to get and attain a long-term relationship with somebody that you know you have a potential future with I don't um, just hear. I don't hear a lot of that messaging coming from the red pill. I think red pill have two different categories. One is hookups, casual sex, where it's just like about getting your nut, and then the second one is like like basically like 
uh, having kids, right? It's like, and, and that for a girl like that, she uh, needs to kind of stay quiet, don't talk too much, uh, just be in the kitchen, cook, clean, uh, fuck whenever you want, raise the kids, and that's like, you know, that's it. Uh, and that's like, it's also in a very lot. So both both of them are very logical. They never talk about like, okay, well, like, how much of a connection should you have with your wife? How do you mm-hmm. talk about communication? How do you guys make sure that both of your needs are being met? That's like never something you see addressed in the rectal community. It's always like, okay, find a woman who has a, who has, who's a virgin or very low body count, who knows how to cook and clean. It's always very logical reasons. It's never but like, and sure, sometimes the logical stuff is important, but it's like they completely forget about the emotional stuff. And that's why typically uh, very few red pillars are actually in like solid relationships. Most of them are just like single. Uh, some of them have been single their whole life. Some of them have never been in relationships, right? I think we all know who I'm talking about. Um, you well, know, we're also trying to turn back the clock, right? As far as, you know, kind of how men typically viewed women in a different era. And, you know, that's not changing. You know, so women, you know, aren't going to, women are going to continue to progress. They're not going to be super submissive and in the kitchen and barefoot and pregnant. You know, those right. days are gone. And so it's really about, you know, kind of evaluating what's going on right now and then how to navigate it from there. So for example, like, so having more of a 50, 50 partnership and, you know, trying to have good communication skills so that you can, when you're in that relationship, define those roles pretty clearly versus mm-hmm. making assumptions. Yeah. yeah. I, I Sorry, think that's a good lead in to, you know, going back to the three bucket thing. I think that the generation that that woman is in it really varies the buckets or the the level of importance within each bucket, right? So sure, I, I think that for Gen Z women that are doing pretty well where they've gone to college and they have their own career, I would argue that money, like the amount of money that that man is making is less important than somebody of the millennial generation or above, you know, boomers, whatever. I think that they, the older generations consider that is a higher importance. And so I think that the mix up that can sometimes happen with advice that's being given to men is that like, that's not being taken into account. And what matters for many young women now, what matters is like being capable of that 50, 50, right. And having more balanced life and being really emotionally intelligent. Yeah, no, I do think there's a gen- definitely generational component. Like I look at it like between like me and my parents and like, I don't know. What would you call like someone who's like my parents? Would that be a boomer or there's another one? Is that generation? Yeah, baby yeah, boomer, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they would probably be boomers. Yeah, there's boomers, Gen, Gen X. X. That'd be like my category. Then there's millennials, which would be you guys. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously someone in their 20s. So yeah, so, so I think my parents would be somewhere between a boomer and generation X. But anyway, like, yeah, okay. there's definitely a generational thing where like I think like someone like my mom would like look much more for like stability, intelligence. Yeah. Rather than like like I I, I look at her like boyfriend slash fiance he's he's not a good looking dude at all like he's you know, like I've asked her like hey like just out of curiosity like you know you could probably do better she's like yeah you know I just like he's a, he's very stable he's reliable he's responsible that sort of thing sure although although sometimes like even that is called into question uh, but um, versus like I feel like for a younger girls she probably will prioritize looks more and stuff like that and external things so yeah I do think there's a generational component yeah, yeah. But my mom did not grow up with like Instagram TikTok and all that stuff so it's very very different. I also think there's like, in terms of like uh, promiscuity, there's a big generational gap. Like people in like, mm-hmm. in my mom's generation, I mean, sure, there were some women who slept around in that generation, but there were like a small percentage of women who had like a body count of double digits versus like nowadays it is like way, way more common. Like, I know that like my mom's like, she's like, I don't understand. Like, how are these girls like sleeping around? Like, don't they like, you know, like we didn't do that back in the day. So I do think there's like a lot of different generational uh, things that have changed. Yeah. And you do have to account for that because you can't like live in the past. It's like a business who doesn't do any social media marketing. It's like, okay, but like that's where the future is. Yeah, exactly. And so that's those people are, are who are in their twenties now or teenagers, they've, they've grown up in that and, you know, that's not going away. So it's just going to continue. So what will end up happening is that the older people will die off and this will be the new normal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, I guess like, this is a good question. I think to end it off on, what do you think, what what do you see the future of dating 10, 20 years from now? 10, 20 years from now. I mean, I, I do think that it's going to get worse before it gets better. I think that the turn of it will probably when is when dating apps are better. 
you know, and when there's like a better algorithm, I think that might turn the tide. But I do think that dating apps are here to stay, even though they're not working very well. And I think that there's just this imbalance right now where young women are wanting more of that 50-50 guy. And I think that like guys are trying to adjust to that. And I do think that Gen Z guys are doing a better job at, you know, being capable of that. But um, I, I just think that women do have so many options right now on the dating apps that it's almost like option overload and they're just being so picky that it's, it's hard. It's hard to settle and like be happy with a choice when you know that it's so easily even to just end a relationship. Well, and, if you have infinite amount of choices in yeah. their mind, whether that's true or not, if, if you find a quality in that person that you don't like, right. then it's very easy to say, oh, I'll just go on Tinder it and is. go out on five dates that week it is. And, and monkey branch to somebody else. Yeah, because you can't deny that. Like just thinking that if you end a relationship with somebody that it's going to be difficult to find somebody else like that will hold you back. And I don't see that really as necessarily a bad thing. Because I think that relationships are difficult and you're going to run into those times in which like you need to sit and be uncomfortable and maybe not have the best of times, but you work through it. And if you have that easy out, it's harder for you to do that. And I, even even though I mentioned dating apps, I actually think that hookup culture in general right now is the leading cause of it getting worse. Um. I think that um, I think yeah I agree that like more more choices isn't always better. There's like a legit uh, phenomenon that cures calls buyers fatigue. When you have too many options, you just wind up like getting nothing, right? Because uh, you can't make a decision. But um, I don't think it's going to get better ever. I think it's just going to get worse and worse. Is my opinion. <laughs> I, I I just cannot imagine it getting better for most guys. For some guys, it will be better than ever. So it's not. It's there's there's. I think it's going to be like. Most things, it's, I think it's like dating is going to be like money, which is kind of my prediction where it's like there's going to be small people at the top who like have more than they've ever had in any point in history. Right. And then there's going to be less for everyone at the bottom because there's finite amount of resources, the finite amount of uh, food, finite amount of uh, women, finite amount of, you know, whatever tension, uh, cloud, whatever you want to call it. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to get better for the average guys, my prediction. Yeah, that sounds kind of black pillish, though, Alex. <laughs> Not real, because again, mine. Well, here's here's the difference, though. It's that I don't. I, one, I don't think it's. It, it has to do with primarily has to do with looks. I think it's way more complex than just looks. And number two is that. I think that the average guy can still, from a micro perspective, because now I'm talking from a macro perspective, but from a micro perspective, uh, most guys can succeed. Okay, I don't know how to explain it. Like, okay, from a macro perspective, most guys cannot succeed because if most guys are succeeding, then the bar goes higher, right? But from a micro perspective, right, as a person, you can succeed. Every guy watching this channel or most guys watching this channel can do better. So I think it just depends if you look at it from a macro or micro perspective. I always give advice from a mi uh, micro perspective because I have no control over the macro. I'm not like a like mm -hmm. fucking world leader or something like that. Even if I was, I probably couldn't change like global trends or whatever. So I don't know. Maybe that. Yeah, kind of I can see your point in that way. I just think that it's going to get better when. Gen Z starts having children, and I know that's fewer than other generations, but I think that that's going to be the change in tide when it comes to hookup culture. Like, I really think that that's going to die out, and we're going to have a resurgence of whatever the opposite is you'd call hookup culture. And I think that there's going to be then more connections made that are long term, you know, and women are not going to be with as many men and they're going to pair bond better and i think that's where dating is going to become easier for the average guy i think you're well, i hope you're right that. yeah I, you're wrong <laughs> i actually agree with with alex on that one unless we have a huge resurgence <laughs> in monogamy and that ends up being yeah. a real pillar of our culture as far as saying because you know it used to be even 30 years ago it was something where that was highly valued and Look yeah. up culture, especially for women, that was pretty much taboo. If they did right. it, they would never talk about it. But now right. they're going on podcasts and they're having TikToks and they're rating guys about how good in bed they were. Well, I, I don't think, think that so. they've had reality set in yet, right? So I, I think, think the only way there could be like a research, like there could be the resurgence of what you're describing if there's like some kind of big disaster. There's a comet, there's a famine. <laughs> 
Meaning like society yeah, comes really. close to collapsing. The government has to take a very heavy hand and has to start really pushing like, hey, listen, the human co population is going to collapse in a decade if we don't replicate. So we need to really like mm -hmm. go like, Soviet Union style and like push like monogamy onto people, but that's not going to happen if things are going well. That can only happen if there's a massive disaster. So I do think that like if there's some kind of big disaster, which there could be, but I don't think there probably will be, uh, that yes, we could have a total change in culture. But without that kind of like external event, uh, I don't think that it's going to happen naturally on its own. If that makes yeah. sense, it does make sense. I think that the other reason that I would point to is that in, in general, I don't think that women get much satisfaction from participating in hookup culture long term and i think that those women as they age and they have children of their own they are going to be teaching those children something different than what the, i didn't see that pop up oh, <laughs> they're gonna Trump, be Trump must win the 2024 election that's the catastrophe. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's the catastrophe yeah. um so i think that that you know might change everything you know is what the children are being taught and i know that there's less children being born but that's the other part is that are the people that are participating in hookup culture that don't end up in relationships, they're probably having less children. So their morals are not going to be passed down to the next generation. It's going to be like a natural selection. They'll be weeded out. Whereas the families, the ones that have a family unit, family structure, they're going to pass down those morals. And whether or not they ever participated as parents themselves in hookup culture, that's debatable. But I think either way, if they participated, they can probably look back and say that did not help me that did not help my mental state it was not good for me i'm going to teach my children to do different than me and do better than me because we see that in many aspects of life and then i think that for the parents that never participated obviously you know there's probably some morals that they have that they would also pass down to yeah. their children i would yeah. say that more values than morals but oh, true. Uh, but yeah i would say that to, to piggyback on that, that I don't think that for men, it's healthy either as far as long term. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I think that if you're young and you kind of um, go through that that phase, I think it gets old. It's almost kind of like when you're young and you go to the club for the first time. It's really fun mm -hmm. and exciting. And then by the time you hit 25, it's just it's it, not as fun. It's, it's not that fun. Okay. It loses its luster <laughs> kind of. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's close it out. Uh, do you guys want to plug your channel, your TikTok, your YouTube, uh, your podcast? Tell yes. the guys where you can find so you. So across the board, um, TikTok and YouTube, you can find us at the Emily and Todd podcast. Um, and then me individually also on TikTok is Emily W. King. And you can check out the episode I did on Emily Top Podcast. It was a really good one. It, we went for like two hours on that one. Uh, it was a good yeah. discussion. But yeah, thank you both yeah, for totally. coming on. I think it was fun. Wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be, right, Emily? <laughs> no, not bad at all. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for yeah, having for us. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right, guys. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Take care. Okay. You Take too. Care, Bye. Bye.